All right, well, good morning. It's good to be in God's house today. Would you please stand? Turn to number 206, hymn number 206, Wonderful Grace of Jesus, number 206. On the first verse, wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall the praise be Taking away my burden, setting the spirit free. For the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the master's grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea. Higher than the mountains, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. Broader than the stuff of my transgression. Greater than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus. Praise the second verse. Wonderful grace of Jesus, preaching to all the lost. I am a heaven pardon, safe in the other world. Change and torn asunder, giving me liberty for the wonderful grace of Jesus. Preaches me. Wonderful, the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty golden sea. Higher than the mountains, serving like the fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. Broader than the soap of my transgressions, greater more than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus Christ. On the third verse, wonderful grace of Jesus, reaching the most deep love. My transforming power, making the God's dear child, virgins and kings and for all eternity, and the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountains, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. Broader than the scope of my transgressions, greater more than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank God for the grace of Jesus Christ. Where would you and I be without His grace? Men most miserable, the Bible says. So. Thank God for his grace. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you, folks, for being in God's house. I trust you be blessed by being here. So, Brother Bob and Jeff, you'd be so kind to come. We'll take up our morning offering. I'll be to start with a word of prayer. Pray for our country and all the needs that it has and all the folks that are hurting up in Pennsylvania at this time. As we go to the Lord of Prayer, Brother Jeff, would you be so kind? To Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with honor, praise, and glory. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and the ultimate sacrifice made for all of us. Dear Lord, as we come to worship you in song and word, I'd like to say a special prayer for those that are affected by the shooting yesterday in Pennsylvania. I pray for the former president, Donald Trump, and I'd like to pray for the families of those, especially the one that lost their, their loved one, the grieving. I pray that you would comfort them and watch over those that are critically injured and heal them, Lord, that they may recover and have a full recovery. Dear Lord, I'd also like to pray for the family of the shooter. 
He was a 20-year-old man. He's a boy. He was a child. What possessed him, what hatred drove him to do what he did? That's what we need to fight. That's what we're up against, Lord. So I pray that you give us the, the tools and, and the things that we need to guard against and fight against this kind of thing. And dear Lord, I ask that you watch over all of us, including our nation. Bring us together because we need you in our midst. We ask that you bless those that give today and that blessing go forth. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. testimony is what God has been able me, enabled me to do by sharing the gospel and my in the in other church services through my 
Bible study group that I do online. Yeah. Hey, support all around the world. Yes, sir. I got to get up this morning and I got to get up. Amen. 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 Anybody else? One once, one twice. Okay, throw it. Amen. Amen. Okay, Brother Ron. I'm thankful for God letting me do the good morning videos. Touch a lot of people. Praise the Lord for that. Don't ever minimize your service to the Lord because God can break and multiply it. When you don't even expect where it's going to go, it's going to go for many people. Keep serving the Lord. That's great. Okay? Anybody else before we go? Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord for the success for latest ministry idea. Almost 700 bottles back. That is incredible. Almost, it was over 90, almost 90 bottles of water every hour. And somehow, some way, the water bottles were cold enough for people to enjoy the water. <laughs> <laughs> I think sometimes the friends walk the bottle through the, cup, the ice water. Here it is right here. But it was good enough for them. So praise the Lord for that. So anybody else have this great testimony about the goodness of the Lord? Okay. Uh, I'd like to thank you as a church. We have these. Hundred shoe boxes. They're, some are full. Some are partially full. We have a list back underneath that uh, that one picture of church of all of our needs. That's going to finish complete the hundred one boxes that we have right up here. And so I want to thank you ahead of time for the boys and girls and moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles around the world. They're going to hear about Jesus Christ and what you are going to do and what you're doing for right now. When we see Jesus one day, I believe that God's going to let us see all the people, our testimonies, our faithfulness, our giving. He's going to let us see all them. And I can't wait for them to say, thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that's changed. So I want to thank you ahead of time. I'm encouraged. Every time I come in here, I see these boxes. And, and I had some folks from yesterday working and seeing them working and getting everything together. It excites me as a pastor just to see the excitement as a church that you are uh, putting forward for the cause of Christ. Thank you for blessing your pastor. Okay, if there's no one else has a quick testimony, okay, one once, one twice. Okay, let's all stand once again. Turn to hymn of hymn number 256. Hymn number 256. It is well with my soul on the first verse. When peace like a river I tend in my way When sorrows I see billows fall Whatever my lot Thou hast sold me to say it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. On the second verse, though Satan should love it. The trial should come. Let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. On the third verse, 
Ministries in Chicago, and he sent his, his family over on a boat, and um, they lost they lost him in a, in a storm. So when the message came back to Mr. Spafford, he said, "I'm going to get on the boat." He got on the he got on the boat. He talked to the captain. He says, "I want to know the exact location, the best location you can think of where my family was was lost at sea." And when he got to that place, they stopped and said, "Mr. Spafford, this is where we're at." He looked across the bow of the ship. And this song came to his heart, to his mind. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say. It's a, le it's a lesson that was taught me to say. It's still well with my soul. You see, the one thing about Mr. Spafford is this, his family knew Christ. And so the assurance of knowing that although they would be separated for the moment, They'd be reunited once again. But my favorite verse is the third verse. It says this, my sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. Think about this. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. All those sins, and I'm sort of a little getting ahead of my message right over here. I'm so excited about the song. But the very fact is that when we get rid of this message this morning, I want you to think about how good God's been to you. When you sit back and you look at everything that's happening in your lives, and through all of it, God has been with you every step of the way. Because it is well with our soul. Because the captain of our soul will never leave us nor forsake us. That's a little sermonette from a little preacher right up here. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. I just love the Lord. I know you do. And as believers, we should have a testimony. Have a testimony for the, what the Lord's done for us. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 7 and 8 says this. Consider what I say. And the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. It says, remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, 
was raised from the dead, according to my gospel. This morning we're going to look at several things that we need to remember. Several things we need to remember. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we're thankful that our sins were nailed to the cross. Not in part, but the whole. We're thankful that no matter what we go through, in the midst of all the storms, you can speak peace while the storm is raging. And we'll have a peace that passes all understanding. Thank you, Lord, that we have something to remember. Based upon that, that one day we came to you, just as what we were, came to you in our, in our broken condition, and you accepted us and, and brought us into the beloved. And you brought us, Lord, into fellowship with you. Brought us into a family. Thank you, dear Jesus. Now, Father, I pray for the message to go across like you wanted to go across, that Jim Fryer sit down and Jesus Christ take over. Lord, I ask that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you. Lord, if there's someone here that's not saved, may they be saved. But we that are saved, Lord, just live the best that we can to glorify the God that loved us so much. Jesus, be glorified. May we be able to say it's been good to be in the house of God. We love you, dear Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. The scriptures tell us, consider what I say. And the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. What's the gospel that Timothy was saying? Is that Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died according to the scriptures. He was buried according to the scriptures and then resurrected according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. That's the gospel. Everything that Jesus did from birth to resurrection to ascension was prescripted in the Old Testament prophets. He lived according to the living word of God. And now Timothy is being told by his, his uh, preacher mentor, Paul. I'm about ready to go into eternity. But don't forget what I've told you. And it's all based upon one thing, about Jesus Christ. Everything that you're going to do once I am gone is going to be based upon the gospel. And the center of the gospel is Jesus Christ. Don't forget don't allow to yourself to wander, but remember and consider everything I've ever told you that everything has been based upon Jesus Christ. It says in the book of Acts, sirs, we would see Jesus. And as believers, we need to see Jesus on a consistent basis. And how do we see Jesus? By reading and studying and meditating upon the very book that God has given to us. A day to remember. First of all, things we remember is this, is that we need to remember Christ's provision. Remember Christ's provision. Look at Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Remember, don't ever take for granted the very provisions that God has given to us. Matthew 16, look at verses 8 through 10, says this. Which when Jesus... Perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up, neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and, ha and, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you, you concerning bread, that ye should be aware of the leaven and the fair of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Remember Christ's provision. Jesus is talking to his disciples and saying, look, don't ever forget all the miracles that you had a chance to be a part of. Don't forget about how that little boy brought the, the loaves and the fishes and how that you broke, I broke them, I multiplied them, and you had baskets and you took them out and had everybody sit down and they and they, you fed them and you fed them and you fed them and you fed them and then when you're empty with that basket you came back and i had some more fish and i had some more loaves and you went back up and you fed the five thousand which in total could have been over twenty thousand people at least because you have to have at least one man and one wife and then you have at least two children that's twenty thousand people 
offered just a few loaves and just a few fish. Don't forget that. Don't allow the religious people out there to muddy your faith. Don't allow them to, to ask you to prove more than what you've already seen. You say we walk by faith and not by sight. Don't forget how God has provided. Think about that. Think about what, how God has provided for you. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You know, the great thing about going to the bank of Jesus Christ, it's never overdrawn. It's an everlasting supply of needs based upon the people that come to ask for it. And many times we miss out on the needs being provided because of just one thing. We have not because we ask not. Because we have been taught to be self-sufficient. We have been taught to work first, then pray later. We were taught in college to pray as if it all depended upon God and work as if it all depended upon you. See, with that, that connection right there, is that you're just not sitting back thinking, well, God, I'm just going to take everything you have, is that you show some effort and say, Lord, I believe that you can do it, and I want to get involved. There's nothing better to get involved in the work of God. It was Henry Blackaby, the old Southern Baptist teacher, who said, when you see God working, don't just pray for God to give you a ministry, but when you see God involved in the ministry, jump in there and say, Lord, what can I do to help? I can remember as a kid that um, my dad was not much of a mechanic, but he had friends that were mechanics. And I liked to get involved. And so what I would do is I'd just start grabbing tools. I said, do you need this? Do you need this? Do you need this? Do you need this? No, not until I ask for it. Don't touch the tools. I have them specifically like I want to, but I want to help. And eventually I hear from my dad, you want to help? Yes, go sit down. <laughs> Always make sure it's in the shade. They could be out in the sun. I'm going to be in the shade. I was smart. But the fact is this, I wanted to do something. I wanted to get my hands greasy, and I wanted to jump in there, and I wanted to work. And I say the work of God. Is exactly that. It's the work of God. You find out where God is working and you get involved. But when you're getting involved, you see what you're doing, but you also see how God provides supernaturally. But my God should supply all your needs. But he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or even think based upon the power that lieth in us. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. So the power that lies with us, who's that? That's God. Christ in us, the hope and glory. So God's going to provide in different ways. God's going to provide in different ways. Don't ever forget God's provisions. Secondly, don't ever forget. Always remember about Christ's love. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. You in Sunday school, you're going to get a... Um, Repetition of what we heard in Sunday school, but that's okay. Repetition is the key to learning. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 7 says this. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. Verses 1 through, one through 3 talks about the, the condition of the world, the unbelieving world. How the unbelieving world are children of disobedience, and children of wrath. That the wrath of God is upon them because they rejected Jesus Christ. And he talks about how bad the condition is. And then all of a sudden, in the midst of all that, God says, excuse me, it may be bad, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Remember, and don't forget about Christ's love. 
You know, we live in a world where that word love is so easily misused and means easily abused. They use love for so many different things and so many misapplications. But the true love comes from the one, the very source of what true love is all about. It comes from God because God is love. And this godly love, which is charity, agape love, is spread abroad through the person of Jesus Christ. Remember Christ's love. The Bible says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Thank God that he loved us enough when we we're the most loveliest in the most loveliest conditions, he still loved us. And that when we call out, say, Lord, I need you, he takes us on and he reaches out of little miry pit and takes us up. And boy, we're not the best looking. We're, we smell because of the world and all the, the aspects of what we're doing in our lives. And he says, you are now mine. Let me clean you up. Let me put you on a solid footing. And this is the direction, walk ye in it. I'm going to change your mind. I'm going to change your thinking. I'm going to change your songs. I'm going to change everything about you because now I'm going to not just live in you, but I'm going to guide you to take you to a much better place than where you were going. God commanded his love toward us. And that while we had sinners, Christ died for us. Not just that, not just based upon his great love for us, he made us alive even though we were dead. Because of his great love for us, he has seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. We're looking at this in Sunday school. Do you realize that one day that you and I as believers are going to sit and we're going to judge the world? You're going to be somewhere representing Jesus Christ. And the world has nothing to say about it. Why? Because Jesus Christ, who is king, is going to put you in that position and no one can take you out of that because they've never been able to unsee who Jesus Christ is. He's put you in a much better place. We saw a verse out of Daniel chapter 12 as the, as the, as the stars. And we're talking about that Christ has placed us in positions like a star. And in that position as a star, your job and my job is not to do anything but to shine in our little place. There's an old chorus I learned in Sunday school, and I'm not going to sing it for you, but it says, brighten the corner where you are, brighten the corner where you are. Someone far from harbor, you may guide across the bar. So brighten the harbor where you are. God has placed you in a specific place because not only does he love you, not only does he believe in you, but he knows that because you love him, that you're going to guide people to bring them to him because of your appreciation and your love for him. And it doesn't matter when we feel like we're worthy of it or we deserve it. God has told us to do it and we're going to do it. But then also, because of his great love for us, he will show the riches of his grace expressed to us in his kindness. To this Many verses that talk about his grace. It says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. There was a minister of Satan that came to buffet him. Why? Because of his revelations that God had given to him. And the many things that God was, was showing to him, God allowed a minister of Satan to buffet him. And he gave him a condition. And for three Times he begged God, God, remove the thorn of the flesh, remove it. But he says, no, my grace shall be sufficient for you. And Paul says, I will do it. Now, many theologians believe this is because of his eyesight. That whatever the problem he had, he begged for God to correct him. He begged for God to heal him. He begged for God to make him better. And God says, no, you are going to have better testimony where you're at now than in any other position or condition that you're at right now. So do what I ask you to do. Brighten the corner where you are. My grace is going to help you. My grace is going to be the oil that you need to be able to deal with situations. 
It's my grace that's going to be there to comfort you when you need an arm around your shoulder. It's my grace that's going to help shoulder the load when you feel burdened. It's my grace that's going to be there, that's going to assure you that knowing that everything's going to be okay, although it may not be okay right now. It's his grace. And his grace will be sufficient. It'll be exactly what you and I need. And the great thing about our Lord is this, is that every one of us have different things of grace that we need, and God has the ability, because he's all sufficient, and his all grace can minister to every one of us at the same time, based upon our needs on a consistent basis. That's the God that we serve. That's the love that we ought to thank God for. And that's, his, that's the, the grace that we ought to be thankful for. But then thirdly, we got to remember Christ's sacrifice. Christ's sacrifice. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. First Corinthians chapter 11. Look at verses 23 through 25 says this. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This, sup, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do, this do ye, as often as ye drink of it, uh, drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Commonly known as the Lord's Supper. Don't forget Christ's sacrifice. Now we do not do the Lord's Supper on a consistent basis for one reason. As a pastor, I come from a very traditional Catholic family. I said to become a priest. It wasn't for the fact that the priest said you'll do better outside the church than being inside the church, then I'd probably be a Catholic priest right now, and hence I would not be the pastor of Independent Baptist Church. But I'm very traditional. And because I know who I am, I don't want anything that I do for the Lord to become so mechanical that I lose the meaning of why I do what I do. And that's why as a church, we don't have it very often. Because I cannot, as a pastor, lead you into a Lord's Supper service to do it because we have to do it. I want it to be just as fresh and just as spiritual and just as strong of an emotional response as you would as the very first time you ever partook in the Lord's Supper. Why? Because I don't want to ever forget the nails in his hands. I don't want to ever forget the nails in his feet. I don't want to forget the, to hear the snap of the, the whip 39 times across Jesus' back. I don't want to ever forget about the crown of thorns being beaten into his head. I don't want to ever forget about the, the beard being yanked out of his jaw. I don't want to ever forget the spitting and the mocking and the cursing and the humiliation that Jesus went through. I want to forget that. As they prayed to him down the Via Della Rosa, in the middle of Jerusalem, totally naked, stumbling, trying to carry a cross, hence they had to have someone come and help, and to walk up Mount Calvary. And after he got to the top, they threw that cross down. Jesus willingly laid on the cross and raised out his hands. And they put the nails in his hands. And can you imagine as they got ready to put that, lift that cross up? Can you imagine as they lifted and lifted and lifted and lifted and all of a sudden, you hear the you hear the uh, the the cross slide into the into the hole and boom. imagine hearing the oh! I don't want to I don't want to ever lose that I don't want to lose the fact that while he's hanging there people are yelling and mocking him and cursing him 
while one on his side was yelling, you don't deserve, we don't deserve to be here. Take us off the cross. And the other one says, we deserve it. He doesn't. Will you remember me when you come into your kingdom? It says, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. I don't want to forget the fact that the, the sky grew dark. They said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When God Almighty literally turned his back on his only son as he bore all of our sins, I don't want to forget that. As he carried that, he yells to Telestai, paid in full. I don't want to forget that. I don't want to forget the fact that he looks down there and he sees his mother and says, John, you take care of mama like she's your own mother. And mom, you take care of John as if he's your own son. And I don't want to ever forget that he yells across the crowd and says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Takes his last breath. Joseph of Arimathea goes and begs for the body of Jesus. They pull the nails out of his hands. They put him down. They take him into the, into the tomb. Wrap his body up and, and they close it. On the third day, while they were coming, the ladies were coming that were going to put the ointment on the body cover up and not just anoint the body but to cover up the, the smell of it of the rotting corpse. As they came around the corner I can imagine all of a sudden I'm sure there was a, a light. There's an angel on top there. Sir, what have you done with Jesus? And the angel says, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He's not here. He's in Jerusalem. Go tell his tell his disciples. And they drop their ointments, they run, and they tell the disciples, Jesus is alive. And Peter and John and the disciples come, and Peter sticks his head into the grave, into the, in the grave site. So, Whoa, he's not there anymore. I don't want to forget that. Because he did all that. Because he loved Jim Fryer. He loves you. He loves the world. Don't ever forget that. See, sometimes we get caught up with all the other stuff that's out there. But the true reason why we do what we do, because of what happened on that day on the cross. Don't ever forget that. But then lastly, we need to remember that Jesus is coming back. Revelation 3.3 3 says, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast, and repent, if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. He was talking to the church in Sardis and telling them, hey, you better get focused in. The thief is coming. The thief is coming. People are going to be walking two by two, the Bible says. One's going to keep on walking, one's going to disappear. The Bible says there'll be two in bed. One's going to leave the bed. The other one's going to still be in bed. You see, when Jesus Christ is ready to come and God says, go get your children, and the angel's going to blow the trumpet of God, and Jesus, God is going to say, come up hither, and Jesus is going to come down and meet us in the air, and he's going to change our vile bodies, and we're all the sickness and all the pain and all the heartache and everything we've ever gone through will be wiped away and we're going to have glorified bodies like Jesus Christ. And those people that were in the grave, those folks whose bodies actually are spread all over the world, they're going to be somehow God's going to put them all together and we're going to meet them in the air and the Lord's going to say, are you ready to go home, children? Let's go. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. It may be tough right now, but a better day is coming. We may have a lot of struggles now, but a better day is coming. Jesus said this, keep doing what I ask you to do. He says, occupy till I come. He also says in the book of Hebrews, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is now sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. He's interceding for you and I. He's saying, Father, we need to give them help. They're, they're struggling right now. Father, we need to 
help them. We need to guide them. We need to provide protection for them. We need to do everything we can for them because those are our children right there. He is advocating. When Satan comes up and says, you know about that old Jim Fryer? He's a dirty old dog. You can't believe all the bad things he's doing. And, the, and God says, well, let me talk to his, his advocate. And the advocate says, I see nothing wrong with him. He's justified. And one day he's going to be glorified because of the blood that was shed on the cross. May I say that today, whatever's going on in our lives, don't get caught up with everything that we just don't quit remembering. Number one, Christ's provision. Two, his sacrifice, his love. But then, cheer up, my brethren, live in the sunshine. It's going to be better in the by and by. Jesus is coming. May it be today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. With head bowed and eyes closed, Christians praying. Let me ask a couple questions. First question is this, say, Pastor, I know that I know that I'm on my way to heaven. I'm born again. Can I see your hands of testimony? God bless you. You may put your hands down. Praise the Lord for that. Second question is say, Pastor, something in the message spoke to my heart. Would you please pray for me? Can I see your hand? I know I have my hands up. I need this also. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. Then we're going to stand. I'll have music playing. If you need to use an old-fashioned altar, it's here or where you're at. Talk to the Lord. Jesus said that where two or three are gathered together in his name, he's in the midst of us. He is here today. Talk to him. Cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. Talk to him. Call upon him in the day of trouble and he will answer. Father, we gave the message. Lord, I pray that as we remember those different things in our lives, you've never quit providing. You never quit walking with us. One day you're going to come and get us. And Lord, I thank you for all you've done for us. May we never forget that. Bless each one here. Father, we talk about a broken heart behind every door. There's broken hearts all through the, in this room right here let alone folks that are watching this on video. Father, I pray that in your supernatural way that you minister to everyone that's calling out to you. Bless this invitation, Jesus, so that someone here not be saved. If they're not saved, may they get saved today. But most of all, may we leave this place knowing that you met with us. Dear Jesus, bless this invitation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's all stand with head bowed and eyes closed. Christians praying. If you need these no fashion altars here. Praise Lord, God is good. Amen.
that song is a special song to Lucinda. And first time I ever heard it, I was just blown away. because She told me the story by Charles Weichel, was an evangelist. And he preached all over the South. One day he was getting ready to go to an evangelistic meeting. His wife said, if you leave this house, when you come back home, you'll never see me again. I'm leaving you. And so he left to go preach a revival. And he came home and she was gone. And he penned these words, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. No one ever has been as kind and true. No one's ever cared for me like Jesus. So let me just encourage you today, no matter what's going on in your life, there's no one that's ever going to care for you anymore than Jesus Christ. And we're part of the family called the family of God. What an amazing family you live in. Amen? Amen. Very quickly, we're going to take up a change offering for our Christmas shoe boxes to Brother Jeff. Brother Bob, please come. We'll take this up. Don't forget, at 5.30 tonight is Bible study, and then church on Sunday, and uh, Bible study on Wednesday night. Lord, bless this offering. In your name we pray. Amen. And so don't forget, the end of the month in two weeks, Brother Steve Bender will be here. He is the uh, the missions director at Baptist Bible, Fe Baptist Bible Fellowship. He'll be speaking here in the morning services. And then on the 18th of August, we're going to be having a special time of prayer because the next day, the 19th, is the first day of school for our young people. More than ever before, we need to pray for our young people. They need our prayers as for protection, guidance, and direction in their lives. And so we'll have a special service that morning praying for our young people here in our Crawford County area. Okay. Let's all stand as we are dismissed. For the Bob, take us to the Lord's throne, please. Amen. Yeah.